Curzio Malapart, June 9, 1898, July 19, 1957, born Kurt Eric Suckert, was an Italian journalist, dramatist, short story writer, novelist and diplomat. His chosen surname, which he used from 1925, means evil, wrong side and is a play on Napoleon's family name Bonaparte which means, in Italian, good side. Born in Prado, Tuscany, Malaparte was a son of a German father, Erwin Suckert, a textile manufacturing executive, and his Lombard wife, the former of Alina Brilli. He was educated at Collegia Sicognini in Prado and at the La Sapienza University of Rome. In 1918 he started his career as a journalist. Malaparte fought in World War I earning a captaincy in the 5th Alpine Regiment and several decorations for valor, and in 1922 took part in Benito Mussolini's march on Rome. In 1924, he founded the Roman periodical La Conquista dello Stato, The Conquest of the State, a title that would inspire Emir Ledesma Ramos La Conquista dello Stato. As a member of the Partito Nazionale Fascista, he founded several periodicals and contributed essays and articles to others, as well as writing numerous books, starting from the early 1920s, and directing two metropolitan newspapers. In 1926 he founded with Massimo Bonchampelli, 1878-1960, the literary quarterly 900. Later he became a co-editor of Fire Letteraria. 1928-31, and an editor of La Stampa in Turin. His polemical war novel essay, Viva Caporto, 1921, criticized corruption in the Italian upper classes as the real enemy. The book was forbidden because it offended the Regia Esercito. In Technique du Coup d'État, 1931, Malaparte attacked both Adolf Hitler and Mussolini. Here he stated that the problem of the conquest and defense of the state is not a political one. It is a technical problem, a way of knowing when and how to occupy the vital state resources, the telephone exchanges, the water reserves and the electricity generators, etc. He taught a hard lesson that a revolution can wear itself out in strategy. In the same book, first published in French by Grasset, he famously entitled Chapter 8, A Woman, Hitler. This led to Malaparte being stripped of his National Fascist Party membership and sent to internal exile from 1933 to 1938 on the island of Lipari. He was freed on the personal intervention of Mussolini's son-in-law and heir apparent Galzo Ciano. Mussolini's regime arrested Malaparte again in 1938. 1939, 1941, and 1943 and imprisoned him in Rome's infamous jail Regina Coeli. During that time, 1938-41, he built a house, known as the Casa Malaparte, on Capo Masalo, on the Isle of Capri. It was a key location in Jean-Luc Godard's film, Le Mepris, Ang, Contempt, starring Bridget Bardet and Fred Slane based on an Alberto Moravia novel. Shortly after his time in jail he published books of magical realist autobiographical short stories, which culminated in the stylistic prose of Donna Come Me, Woman Like Me, 1940. His remarkable knowledge of Europe and its leaders is based upon his experience as a correspondent and in the Italian diplomatic service. In 1941 he was sent to cover the Eastern Front as a correspondent for Corriere della Sera. The articles he sent back from the Ukrainian fronts, many of which were suppressed, were collected in 1943 and brought out under the title Il Volga Nas in Europa, The Volga Rises in Europe. Also, this experience provided the basis for his two most famous books, Caput, 1944 and The Skin, 1949. Caput, 
his novelistic account of the war, surreptitiously written, presents the conflict from the point of view of those doomed to lose it. Malaparte's account is marked by lyrical observations, as when he encounters a detachment of Wehrmacht soldiers fleeing a Ukrainian battlefield, when Germans become afraid, when that mysterious German fear begins to creep into their bones, they always arouse a special horror and pity. Their appearance is miserable, their cruelty sad, their courage silent and hopeless. As the Italian reporter, in his powerful Caput Wii testimony, Malaparte described an interview with Pavelic, while he spoke, I gazed at a wicker basket on the Poglavnik's desk. The lid was raised and the basket seemed to be filled with mussels, or shelled oysters, as they are occasionally displayed in the windows of Fornham in Mason and Piccadilly in London. Casertino looked at me and winked, Would you like a nice oyster stew? Are they Dalmatian oysters? I asked the Poglavnik. Anti Pavelic removed the lid from the basket and revealed the mussels, that slimy and jelly like mass, and he said, smiling, with that tired good natured smile of his, it is a present from my loyal Astatius. Forty pounds of human eyes. Milan Kundera's view of the caput is summarized in his essay The Tragedy of Central of Europe. It is strange, yes, but understandable, for this reportage is something other than reportage. It is a literary work whose aesthetic intention is so strong, so apparent that the sensitive reader automatically excludes it from the context of accounts brought to bear by historians, journalists, political analysts, memoirists. According to D. Moore's editorial note, in the skin, Malaparte extends the great fresco of European society he began in Caput. There the scene was Eastern Europe, here it is Italy during the years from 1943 to 1945. Instead of Germans, the invaders are the American armed forces. In all the literature that derives from the Second World War, there is no other book that so brilliantly or so woundingly present triumphant American innocence against the background of the European experience of destruction and moral collapse. The book was condemned by the Roman Catholic Church, and placed on the Index Librorum Prohibitorum. It was adapted for the cinema in 1981. From November 1943 to March 1946 he was attached to the American High Command in Italy as an Italian liaison officer. Articles by Curzio Malaparte have appeared in many literary periodicals of note in France, the United Kingdom, Italy and the United States. After the war, Malaparte's political sympathies veered to the left and he became a member of the Italian Communist Party. Citation needed, in 1947 Malaparte settled in Paris and wrote dramas without much success. His play Du Cote de Chez Proust was based on the life of Marcel Proust, and As Capital was a portrait of Karl Marx. Cristo Proibido, Forbidden Christ, was Malaparte's moderately successful film, which he wrote, directed and scored in 1950. It won the City of Berlin Special Prize at the first Berlin International Film Festival in 1951. In the story, a war veteran returns to his village to avenge the death of his brother, shot by the Germans. It was released in the United States in 1953 as Strange Deception and voted among the five best foreign films by the National Board of Review. He also produced the variety show Saxophone and planned to cross the United States on bicycle. Just before his death, Malaparte completed the treatment of another film, Il Compano P. After the establishment of the People's Republic of China in 1949, Malaparte became interested in the Maoist version of communism, but his journey to China was cut short by illness, and he was flown back to Rome. I.O. in Russia E. in China, his journal of the events, was published posthumously in 1958. Malaparte's final book, Maldetti Toscani, His Attack on Middle and Upper Class Culture, appeared in 1956. 
He died in Rome from lung cancer on July 19, 1957.